Hello, my name is John and I'm going to be walking you through how to create a production bomb today. So as you notice when I log into Microsoft Dynamics Nav, uh, I am in the Production Planner Role Center, which means they're going to put things in my home screen that as a production planner I would use on a daily basis. You can see here I have production orders, blanket orders, sales orders, items, production bombs, and routings. So in order to create a bomb, I could just click simply here on my production bombs and it's going to open up my production bomb list. So this is a list of every production bomb I have. Now if you're not in this role, you'd have to navigate the long way. In order to do that, you'd come down to departments, we'd go over to manufacturing, and we'd go to product design. And within product design, we have production bomb. And again, it's going to take you to that very same list. It's just a different route. You notice at the top, I got to the same place, I just took a different route. So I'm going to create a new production bomb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here and I'm going to click new. And I'm just going to hit enter to assign a new number. Now normally you would create your own number series. Most likely you would enter the number of the actual item you're producing. So the finalized item in your item list. But for right now I'm just going to enter. And it automatically assigns a number for me based on my number series. And I'm just going to call this John's test bomb. All right. So now I enter description. Notice when I tab off of it, what's going to happen is the search name is going to be populated. Now the search name is defaulted to what you put in the description field. Um, you can always change it, but it's going to default to what you put in the description field. Now, next thing I have to do is I have to choose a unit of measure. I'm going to click my drop down, and you'll notice I'm just going to choose pieces because whatever I'm creating is pieces. Now, if you're creating something different, whatever unit of measure you set up, you can choose. Our next option here is our status. And when I click the drop down, you'll notice I have four statuses. When I first create this, I'm going to put it in the new status. So if I look at my list, I can see which production bombs were just created. Now the next status certified. When you put it into a certified status, that is the only status that you are allowed to use this production bomb on an actual production order. So if you need to go through some you know, processes of approval, some engineers have to approve it or managers have to approve it before you actually use it in production, we would leave it into new or under development. And then when you actually want to use it in production, we could change it to certified. Now, when it's in certified, you can't make any changes. So usually, if you need to make changes, you'll change the status to under development, because technically it's not a new production bomb, but it is under development, and you need to change it to that status in order to make any changes. So if you need to change the quantity per items on there, you're going to have to put it into the status of under development. When it's in certified, you can use it in production, but you cannot make any changes to it. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it in new. Now, you'll notice my search name field was automatically populated based on what I put in my description field. The next field, version numbers and active version. Now, we're not going to show those right now, but what you can do for that is say you're creating a production bomb for a car door, and the new 2013 model comes out, and you need to change one piece on it. You don't want to create a whole new bomb, but you need to change just a couple things on it. You can change, you can have different versions of one bill of materials. So that way you don't have to create the whole new bomb. And then you can put a start date on, you know, at December 31st, I want you to switch to this bomb and every production order created after that will then use the new version. So you can go ahead and create versions in advance and then say at this date, I want it to take effect. So it's kind of a neat feature in order to not have to create new bombs for all new, you know, little tinks, your modifications you're making to your build materials. So after I fill out my header, I'm going to come down here and you'll notice I have lines. And this is where I add items and other things like that. So I'm going to click my type. And you'll notice I have item or I have production bomb. So if I choose an item, I'm just saying I need these several items. Whatever. If I was creating a bike, I would need you know, a wheel, a chain, all those different things. Now, if your chain had its own production bomb, so you know the actual links and you're actually creating the chain, you would put in production bomb here and say, you know what, I, I need this production bomb. So you're not saying I just need an item, you're saying I need an item that has its own bomb, right? So you're basically nesting production bombs. So I'm just going to choose item and then you'll notice my number field is now when I click the drop down is a list of my items. So I'm going to type in one and you'll notice I'm just going to act like I'm creating a bicycle. So we're going to say I need a front wheel. I tab off of it and notice it populates the description for me. Now here's where I choose how many I need to produce this. So I'm creating a bike you only need one front wheel, so I'm going to just enter one, and that's in pieces. Um, scrap percentage, I'm not going to scrap any wheels, hopefully, in my production, but 
if you're using you know raw materials or something along those lines you can put in a scrap percentage here which based on your experience you know when you produce this you're going to scrap this percentage of the item now we can also put in a routing link code which allows you to specify at which step in the route that this material is used so uh, that'll be another video on how to use routings but for now this is just uh, you'll notice here I have assembly inspection and CNC axle so I'm going to say this is part of the assembly process so we're going to use that material in that actual process now variant code if I had variants for this item I could choose which item variant I want to use lead time offset is a field that allows you to add to the runtime so you're saying it takes this plus this time now if we go to the next line I'm just gonna add another item so I'm just gonna kinda of build my uh, materials here so I'm gonna need two rims right for a bike tab over and then I'm gonna need spokes I'll need two of those let's say there we go. axle front wheel so different things like that So I'm just going to go ahead and build out my build materials and then once I hit OK you'll notice it's going to save. So for now I didn't build a whole bike but we're just going to pretend that this is a whole bike. So I'm going to hit OK and now you'll see here I in my production bomb list I have John's test bomb right and it says new because it is a new bomb. Now if I want to use this in production I'm going to have to open it back up and change it to certified and, and now this way I can actually use it in production. But this is only the first step, right? We created a production bomb, but what is this production bomb associated with? All we did was build a bill of materials. We didn't associate it with anything. In order to associate your bill of materials to a final item, what you would do is you'd come, I'm just going to go to my home tab, and I'm just navigating to my items list, right? So I'm going to just choose one test item, and I'm going to assign my production bomb to that item, right? So this is item number 0401030. I'm going to say the replenishment system is production order. And then I'm going to come over here and you see I have a field that says production bomb number. When I click this drop down list you'll notice that list I saw on the last screen of all my production bombs is now in here. So I'm going to choose my John's test bomb and tab off of it. Now what I did was I said to build this test item I need to use this bill of materials. Right? So now the two are associated with one another. And that's where I was saying normally you would call the production bomb number the item number so you have the link and you know which one is which. It makes it easier. Um, you can manually assign production bomb numbers. It's best to assign it as the same number as the actual item you're producing. So when I click OK, now that production bomb is associated with that item. So in order to produce this item, it's going to pull on that production bomb. And that is how you create a production bomb. Thank you very much.